Well, it is hard to believe that it was one year ago today that the Almeda fire tore through the Rogue Valley. Yeah, many of us were just starting our day on September 8th of 2020 like any other, not knowing what was going to come, something that would stick with us for the rest of our lives. Yeah, so let's take a quick look back at some of the scanner traffic from that unforgettable day. And I do want to warn you, some of this may be hard to hear. I do not know the status that any of that has been done with the magnitude of what we're facing here. I'm trying to stop the fire from moving west in town. It's got multiple buildings going still on both sides. The power pole has sheared off and fallen. There's another power line that's on fire. We just need to stop traffic on Talon Avenue for a while. Got another spot fire. Copy that. We're just running super low on resources. Yeah, really hard to listen to and hard not to be catapulted back to that day. Just hearing some of what firefighters were going through trying to attack the Almeda fire. The first call about it came in at 1106 by 1130. Two homes were already destroyed. The fire was fueled by uncontrollable winds with gusts up to 45 miles per hour. And you can see in some of this video just how intense those winds were. It felt like it was like not even 30 seconds in between one structure igniting to the next, to the next. And, and we're getting higher gusts now than before. Battling the Almeda fire required unique teamwork. Not only did it require all of the resources from stations around the region, the Oregon Department of Forestry stepped up using their helicopters to drop retardant on homes. Usually ODF only works on wildland firefighters, not structural ones. And on top of that, an interstate agreement was requested asking for the help of California firefighters. When you see ODF planes dropping um, in the middle of cities, that's pretty unique. It means that things have gone really bad. Jackson County Sheriff Nathan Sickler says it wasn't until five or six that fire activities started to slow down and they could get ahead of evacuations. By then, though, the fire had made its way from Ashland all the way up to South Medford. In its 13 mile path, it killed three people and destroyed roughly 2,500 homes. Now, the county has faced a lot of harsh criticism for its use of the EAS system or lack thereof. NBC5 News was the first to ask officials about why the emergency alert system, which goes to TV and radio stations, was never used during the Almeda fire. County officials have defended its use of citizen alert notification system because it can warn people in a specific area. But a citizen alert only works if you're already signed up for it or have a landline telephone in the affected area. The EAS alert would have gone out to the whole county. The Almeda fire is considered the biggest criminal investigation in Jackson County. And while police believe the fire was human caused, a year later, no one has been arrested for starting it. Now, throughout the investigation, 18 law enforcement agencies from Oregon, Washington, even Alabama have assisted with the case, and over 200 people have been interviewed. But police did arrest a man for starting a second fire that merged with the Almeda fire that night. Police say 41-year-old Michael Bakella started a fire in Phoenix. He is facing 32 separate charges, including arson, criminal mischief and reckless endangerment. He pleaded not guilty to all of those charges last year. Now, people from all over the valley, the country, even internationally have rallied together to help. Yes, yeah, so listen to this. Every state in the country donated to the United Way of Jackson County. In addition, seven foreign countries, including the Netherlands and Germany. The nonprofit raised $3.4 million for its fire relief fund. Of that, they've invested $2.2 million back to helping 837 families. The organization also helped Rogue Food Unites serve more than 770,000 meals to fire survivors. Rogue Credit Union announced its fire relief fund broke a million dollars. And we know this is hard to watch and hear, but through those trials and tribulations, there are triumphs. And over the last 12 months, we have seen an overwhelming amount of strength and kindness from our community. We so loved seeing the ways that you came together after the devastating Almeda fire that we wanted to bring one old story back. Here's Nicole Constantino. It's really, really uplifting to know that you can make a difference in any community. Generosity. We put it out there, put it on Facebook, put it out to the community, and they rallied. It's what we've seen all across Southern Oregon. From strangers donating a truck and trailer full of equipment to a father who lost everything. Feels really good that I'm helping 
everyone who has lost their homes. To a 10-year-old girl in Medford raising over $3,000 for fire victims by selling, of all things, pink lemonade. Thank you. Thank you. The community united. A former Phoenix resident who owns an apparel company in California helping out his former home. All right, let me, let me try and do something. Handing out tens of thousands of clothing items. It really doesn't matter how old you are. A fifth grade class at St. Mary's School donated hundreds of bags filled with supplies to children who lost their homes in just three days. You can have a big impact. Grants Pass High School band members put together 100 care packages and letters for their counterparts on the Phoenix High School band. Staff at North Middle School also collected thousands of dollars worth of gift cards for families. Members of Congress also joining the effort, helping a Korean War veteran who lost everything, including several medals for his service. Congressman Greg Walden presented him with a new flag, photos from his past D.C. trip, and mementos from his honor flight. They're now working on getting replacements for all of his medals. It's overwhelming. In a time of disaster, destruction, and uncertainty came faith, optimism, and selflessness. I know in the long run it's going to be a long road recovery, but... Uh, little acts of kindness, I think, go a long way. In Jackson County, Nicole Constantino, NBC5 News. I love that story. Now, please know that you, your families, your loved ones, your friends are all in our hearts and our thoughts today and have been every day since this day last year. So take some time for yourself to reflect on where we were a year ago and where we are now. And although there is still so much work left to be done, we have come a long way. We have rebuilt, we have been resilient, and we have come together in a way this community has never seen before. And that, my friends, is something to be proud of.